Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about the Zero Waste Movement, and I want to talk about some things that I see in it that I sometimes don't like. And I want to talk about a way of thinking about how to really maximize your positive influence on the world when it comes to reducing the total amount of waste. So the Zero Waste Movement is this movement to reduce as much as possible, with the goal of completely eliminating any sort of unsustainable waste that we generate. So for example, things that go to landfill. And unfortunately, most of us in modern society are generating a lot of waste in ways that aren't sustainable. Like, things aren't getting recycled, and there are all sorts of negative environmental impacts of this waste when it gets out into the environment. Not all of it even stays in the landfill. There's a lot of litter, there's a lot of stuff that blows into the ocean, there's all sorts of problems with plastic that is not biodegrading, and things like that. So I think this is a really important movement, and it's an important thing to be working on. But sometimes the way I see it play out among the people who seem most passionate about it doesn't seem like it's having as big an effect as it could, and I want to talk about why. Different people generate radically different amounts of waste. Like, there's a lot of reasons for this, and one of the reasons is the wealth disparity. That some people in our society just have a lot more wealth and use more resources. And in our society, pretty much everything we buy and do is generating some waste, either directly or indirectly. And some people make better or worse decisions or choices about what to buy, what to use, and so on. So there's a small portion of the people that is generating a disproportional, disproportionate amount of waste, and then there are other people who are generating disproportionately less. And for the most part, the people who get interested in this zero waste movement seem to be people who already aren't generating very much waste. So, if you're someone who already is generating less waste than average, and you were to somehow reduce the amount you generate to zero completely, which would be awesome, you're still not really having the biggest effect on the environment, because you weren't the biggest contributor to the problem to begin with. The biggest contribution is coming from the people who are consuming more resources and are less environmentally conscious. So if you really care about influencing the environment in as positive way as possible, you need to factor in those other people, and you need to think, okay, how are my actions going to affect those people? So reducing the amount of waste you generate, it's not just about your own impact. It's also about setting an example to others, and so I want to address two problems that I see. The two problems that I see, one is that there can be a sort of judgy attitude among some environmentalists. And so for example, I love using these reusable shopping bags. I've been using them for years, and over time I've made a point of using them more and more, so that I'm very rarely taking a plastic bag. Um, I've been present in uh, conversations where people are talking about these things, and one thing that I saw happen that really bothered me is people were talking about these reusable bags, and everyone's like, oh wow, these are great, I started using them, hey, are you not using them yet? Like, you can get on this, and here's where you can get some, I could give you some, and I'm thinking, okay, this is great. And then, another person pipes up in the conversation, and she's like, yeah, I use these almost all the time, and the few times that I do get plastic bags, I make sure to reuse them over and over again, because I want to, you know, I store them in my house, and I use them for different things. And there's another person there who's a sort of, I'd characterize her as like a really die-hard, zero-waste person, and she was like, oh, it's not okay to use plastics at all, like, those could get out into the environment, and like, we shouldn't be using them at all, like, plastic, we just really need to be completely beyond plastic, and she kind of started jumping down this other woman's throat. And I was like, okay, everyone here has been really positive so far, and sharing different ways to reduce their waste, and suddenly you're now judging this woman because she's like, not going 100% in. 
And that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Like, it, it sort of introduced this negative vibe into the conversation. It was kind of awkward, kind of off-putting. And to be honest, it made me not want to interact with that person again who, who said that. And it made me, you know, not want to listen to her as much. And that's kind of bad because she probably had some things to teach me and to teach this other woman about how to reduce our environmental impact. And I think that that negativity and that judgmentalism, the sort of thing of like, you have to be going 100, and if you're not going 100%, you're not good enough, and I'm going to judge you, I'm going to shame you, that approach I found is re really off-putting. So that's one thing that I've seen in the zero waste movement. And it's not just that one person. I've seen that attitude from other people over time. That was just probably the worst example of it. Okay, thankfully though, most people aren't like that. But there's still another problem that I see in the zero waste movement, which is there is a sort of disconnect and a social isolation. I talked earlier about how there are some people in society who generate more waste than others, and that's both a function of wealth and total consumption of resources, and also a function of how environmentally conscious people are. And so if you want to reduce waste uh, as much as possible, you really need to reach the people who are generating the most waste, because if you don't address that, you're never really going to fix the problem. And here's where the problem lies. Most of the people that I see who are the real leaders in terms of reducing their waste, they are very disconnected from the people who are the big consumers. And they're, they don't live in the same communities, they don't have friends that are in these sorts of use habits, um, they don't interact with them very much, and they specifically they don't discuss environmental issues with these people. And it's like, if you're isolated from those people, how are you ever going to influence them? Now this is a really tough problem to tackle, but I think it's, it's something that you can chip away at, and there are things that you can do. And I also think it relates to that sort of judgy attitude. Because if you have that judgy attitude, that's going to be off-putting to other people, especially people who are the least environmentally sound, because those are the people that you're probably going to be harshest on in how you talk to them. And so, I'd say the first thing, if you want to connect with the people who it would make the biggest difference for you to connect with, uh, the people who are using the most resources, the first thing you need to do is let go of that judgy attitude. And you need to instead adopt an attitude of helping and supporting people. And I think part of that is you're going to need to adopt this sort of, let, like, this attitude of starting by helping people reduce their impact. Don't say you need to go right to zero right from the start. Just help people to start moving in the right direction. The second thing, though, that I think you can do, besides letting go of that judgmental attitude, I think it helps if you can start bridging gaps socially on other issues. So, for example, I noticed that attitudes towards waste generation and environmental issues often break down along political lines. And people who are very liberal seem more likely to care about this stuff than people who are moderately conservative to very conservative. So if you're just living in this little liberal bubble, you're not ever going to reach some of these people. And I think that's a problem, and this is one of many reasons that I think it's important to have friends with a diverse range of political views. So, again, if you're be having this judgy attitude about unrelated political is issues, not just uh, environmental issues, that's also going to be sort of hindering your ability to get through to people. So basically, I've already talked about this a lot. This is a pretty long video, so um, that's what I have to say for now. I think the zero waste movement is a great idea, but if you really want to achieve zero waste in society as a whole, like, we're going to need to include everybody in it, and that necessitates, it's absolutely necessary to have a non judgmental attitude towards it. That's how I feel about this. So, yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you.